know myself, throw it all down. Yeah. You against me is like that. And we could... That's great. Go ahead, make your jokes, mister. Jokey. Joke maker. James, we'll need to get our finger out. Project Football Podcast have shareholders. We don't even have cup holders. Really? Um, why do they want cup holders? <laughs> uh, as a West Brom fan, cups aren't familiar with us, so <laughs> we've no need for cup holders. We are Seismic Cinema, well, me and James are anyway, um, and we believe in the power of escapism, and this time we're recording on a Wednesday evening, and our vision is to promote as many independent creators as we can, be that actors, directors, authors, and in this case, podcasters. So we're really pleased to be joined by Peter Lafleur from the Project Football Podcast. So welcome. Thank you very much. I appreciate you having us on. Uh, cheers for coming on, man. Uh, pleasure. We'll, uh, see how the next little bit pans out and then we might reevaluate that afterwards. <laughs> that's, that's, what we, that's what we do every week. Um, so yeah, it's good to have you on, Mark. Um, obviously, myself and Paul, who couldn't make it tonight, uh, we obviously guested on your show um, yes. to t- talk all things Morton and the Glasgow Rangers. Um, so do you want to give a wee shout out to your show and just tell everyone all about it? Um, yeah, there's, there's not really that much to tell, to be honest. I mean, in a, a vast world of football podcasts that there is, I like to think that I'm doing my little bit. Um, started off as a bit of a I know, a, a small seed a number of years ago with a lad from work who did um, like an audio, uh, an internet radio show, but it was all based around like literature. And he was a big football fan, wanted to add something football related into it. That bit never got off the ground. And then just as COVID was kicking in, I thought I could dust this off. You know, I've got the idea there. And yeah, here we are, 52 episodes and... Two and a bit years later, with uh, various guests on, like you, you mentioned yourselves, uh, I've been on, uh, I've had DJs on, authors, a couple of ex-players, um, so yeah, a, a wide variety, and a lot of musicians as well, which is a big thing in the podcast, because there's a lot of new music involved in it as well, because yeah. as well as football, I love my music, so you know, it gives a bit of a chance for you know new upcoming bands to even if they only get like a few more listens from that, um, gives them a chance to, you know, get more ears on them as well. Yeah, something's, be- something's better than nothing. Exactly. And it's good for a laugh. You know, mm. as long as I'm enjoying doing it, I will carry on. Nice. Uh, where were the, what ex-players was it you had on? Um, I say ex-players, there's been one ex-player and one current player. Um, the ex-player was a guy who used to play for West Brom. Surprise, surprise. Um, he used to manage the, team closest to where I live called uh, Starbridge uh, called Gary Hackett and the right. current player um, I think he's moved clubs recently after a long injury um, but you remember when Marine made the third round of the FA Cup in the Covid season Big uh, way, yeah. I think Mourinho was in charge of Tottenham and they got drawn away to Marine well he's one of the lads who played centre-back uh, for Marine at the time Anthony Miley uh, All right. he was my first proper guest because mm-hmm. the first episode was just like uh, an idea I'd had for people putting together a fantasy penalty shootout lineup yeah and then I had a bit of a chat with uh, James from the Oasis podcast who gave me a great load of help suggested having guests on for an interview and that got the ball rolling to what we know as the project football podcast today very good well, thank you for the introduction. And just before we get into the main episode, um, just want to let you all know that we are on Facebook, Twitter, sorry, X, I'll get that right one week, um, Instagram, Threads, and TikTok. So make sure you give us a, a like, follow, share, all that kind of stuff. And we're on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and all of those other lovely podcasting stations. Where can they find you? Um if you go by Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it these days, it is uh, proj underscore foot. So just an abbreviation of the uh, the podcast name. And uh, Instagram, if you just go for Project Football Podcast. Uh, Facebook, if you just search for that as well, uh, that's where you'll find us. 
and sure. like like yourselves with the audio side of things all the well-known places spotify good pods all that sort of thing and probably not some of the not so well known as ones as well hmm. cool well you should all make sure you um give project football a a like a share a follow and a repost because we can't retweet anymore are you on youtube so, oh, did you say youtube um i've got a few shorts on there from like snippets of shows but i don't really use it as a major platform but we do and we're still sitting at 99 subscribers colin it's still not it's still not sitting with me it's so, still not broken the ton yet no we, we have to be in the 100 club so <laughs> get your finger out people yeah it's quite good though our, i've not even promoted our space jam episode yet and it's almost at 30 views which is, is quite good for not even promoting That's it yeah good Ahsoka from the week before is sitting at um, 90 views, which is pretty good for decent. Pretty, pretty good going for us. So, yeah, we're smack bang in the middle of um, Sporting September. Uh, we just reviewed Space Jam, which you can find on all major platforms. Today, tonight, we're looking at Dodgeball, a true underdog story. Next week, we've got casting views coming on to review the, the original Karate Kid. And then we're making our seismic soccer debuts to talk all things football at the end of the month. Let's face it, if I can do it, anyone can do it regarding football. <laughs> so. There we go, we're, we're sorted then. If that's not uh, an endorsement, nothing is. No, I'm looking forward to the football side of it, just to you know, just chat general football things and maybe even a bit of um, past stuff. Right? So I'm looking forward to that. Sounds I did good. like the idea of the fantasy football um, penalty shootout you were talking about there. Yeah, that was um, that was episode number one. I just wanted something that I could get get going with, so I could get an episode out there and done. Um, but if yeah. you listen to the quality of it, it's not the greatest. I'm not no. going to lie. I was just uh, thinking, there's one person I would not put on my my fantasy football penalty shootout list: Colin Aaron Ramsey. <laughs> yeah, it's all a podcast though. <laughs> we, 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 we don't talk about that one. I think that's a good time to get into our special feature. Um, the idea coming from Mark. So, Mark, do you want to just talk our listeners and viewers through the wee challenge we're going to do before we review dodgeball? Yeah, well, it's basically just merging the two things together. It's effectively pick a dodgeball side, which is six people, um, but football based. So, any players, past or present, no restrictions like I have for one of my segments, but you're going to have to listen to the show to find that out, aren't you? Um, so yeah, I've got my six, and I'm hoping that you two have got yours as well. well I we'll do. Just go maybe player at a time. All right. Yeah, I was I was under the impression it was three past and three current. Was that what you were talking no, no. about? No, it could be. You could have six past, six present, whatever. Any combination. Well, I went did, I, did I give you false instructions there, James? You did. I, I, I'm a little bit happy about it, mate. To be honest I, with I think I, I think I just said. <laughs> I, he stitched you up there. Could... No, that's fine. I'll go. I've got. I'm, I'm quite happy that my team would blow any other team out the water anyway. So I'm, I'm quite ah, happy. So, it. so it's not that, is it? I've also got a yeah. manager. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I had the manager to that as well then. Right, Mark. Okay. Do you want to reveal your. So I didn't have to do this, but just to like have a bit more variety, I've got a goalie, a fullback, a centre back, a winger slash wide midfielder. A centre mid and a striker, just so I had a bit more variety. I don't know what you did, but Brilliant. you'll be giving him squad numbers next. <laughs> so, do you want me to go I... through the whole team, or we're going to go player at a time, or you just go, Mark? Guess always go first. Do you want to go then, James, then me, and we'll just do it that so, way. Just go through the whole team, yeah. Or do I just do player at a time? What do you think? We'll do, yeah, we'll do player at a time. So I've got my first one. My first pick is Big Dane Peter Schmeichel. Good shout. No. Only problem with him, he's a Man, a Man United player before, wasn't he? So, no, uh, that's the only problem. But, no, no, he's, but uh, he's, he's ex Man City. That's why I went for him. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Okay. What about you, James? Um, you go I'll, go, well, I'll go, I'll go, I'll go, stick with the goalkeeper theme, then I'm going to go with Buffon. Nice. The Good best chance. goalkeeper to ever get out of the gloves. I, I tried to think. I tried to think of the goalie that had like the best kind of throw on them, so I went for Manuel Neuer. Oh, good pick. Not a bad shout. So that was two names that come up on mine, but didn't make the cut. 
which given the names that are on there might be a bit surprising. <laughs> um, next up, you're going with the, for me, with the throw theme, Rory Delap. Oh, aye, right. Stoke. Yeah. The Stoke you play for, aye? Yeah, you yeah. not play for West Brom? No. No, no, no. no, no. I didn't. No. Well, I'm going to go with the, the big guy. He's never really made it in the, the Premier League, but he's played for a couple of um, maybe League One, League Two teams. Is the, I might pronounce his name here wrong, but Afakinma. Akin, uh, oh, Adi Akinfenwa. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. So yeah. he's, um, he's a, a giant a guy, and if, I don't fancy getting a, a, a ball thrown and happy him, tell you that much. <laughs> no, you'd so almost, gonna, you'd apologise if you hit him, wouldn't you? If you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. <laughs> I just want to find him. No, so that's my second player. I went for somebody who, because I wanted a mix. I like, I didn't want them all to be big guys because you want somebody who can like dodge the ball as well. Uh, but I went for somebody who's got like just an amazing kick on them. So I assumed they'd be quite good at throwing it as well. I went for Roberto Carlos. Ooh, nice. interesting. Okay. Um. My third one, and um, going back to goalkeepers, Petr Cech. Mm. So I've got a feeling you, he how played. How many goals you got? <laughs> you, you'll find <laughs> out in a bit. <laughs> um, I think he played handball or something at some point in, in his career. Did not play. Did not start playing hockey when he retired. Not, when he retired yeah. from Arsenal, ice hockey. He, might, sure he, he definitely played hockey. I, I might have got the handball thing wrong, but either way, goalkeepers' hands can't go wrong. Um, Sorry, Colin. My next player is um, I'm going to again, again I'm going to my I guess my rules here. Ex my United player, um, ex Leeds player. Why do you hate Man United so much? I just don't like them. I just, I just don't like them. <laughs> 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 um, this is deep rooted stuff, by the way, man. Um, even Alex Ferguson as well. Do you know what I mean? Just the whole stoppage time malarkey, whatever. Um, anyway, player is Eric Cantona. Everyone needs a psychopath in their team, and you can't get much more than a psychopath than him. Well, I maybe. don't know. I'll I'll, uh, I'll 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 see you, Cantona, and I'll raise you in a minute. Right. Okay. So Cantona, I selected because he'd be good at dodging the ball, but also putting it in his own net. I went for Harry Maguire. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that was Aliens' pick. I said of a creditor. Harry Maguire. Honestly, what a player. <laughs> Did you see Stevie Clark? He got asked if he'd like a player, <laughs> if he'd like yeah. Maguire and his team, and he just went, no, nah, no nah. way. <laughs> nah. When he's managed the likes of Jonas Olsen and Gareth McCauley, Harry Maguire, he's just, he's, he's non league in oh, comparison. Yeah. Steve, Steve Clark was your manager. He was, yeah. Um, hmm. I had quite fondness for him, to be fair. Did, did it right for us. Um, nice. Anyway, back on topic now. Um, yeah, you said about your uh, nut job. I've gone for someone who, yeah, he's not known for being that stable mentally when he was playing. Jose Luis Chilever. Oh, aye. Oh, aye. Another goalie. Goalkeeper. Yes. Parag- Paraguay, wasn't that you played for? Yep. Rocket of the left foot as well. Aye. He had a good free kick on him. Yep. Took the penalty stay, I'm sure. Aye, he was mental. Um, I'm going from nut job to Lionel Messi. Agile. I'm pretty sure he could, uh, you know, catch the ball flying in the air and things. So I'm going to be messy. Nice. Right, this is our first doubler. I've got I've got Rory de Lap as well as my ah, kind okay. of wi- wide midfielder. I'm pretty sure he played left midfield at sometimes. Um, so yeah, just because of the cl- the classic, I could I couldn't think who are the the long throw merchants nowadays. There probably is some, but um, yeah, I went for Rory de Lap. Yeah, I've got Darnell Furlong for us. Um, I don't think he's got a patch on Rory Delap though. Mm. So, uh, so my penultimate one is it's the final goalkeeper I've gone for. So you can be happy about that. Um, best friend of Ryan Reynolds, Ben Foster. No, oh. just because he's one of the best keepers I've seen at the Hawthorns for a number of years, and yeah, I, I enjoy watching the Foz the Foz cast. Yeah, I've, I've got a bit of catching up with that one. But yeah, I've gone for Fozzy as number five. Nice. Okay. James? My number five is Romelu Lukaku. Ooh, beast. Aye. Uh, 
again, I'm going for power, a wee bit of agility, man, but uh, we're, we're going to take that trophy home. Power merchants. I thought really kind of strategically about my team. I wanted a leader, so I had to go for our former manager, Stephen Gerrard. I think he would really just rally the troops and come back from well, three, balls down, three balls I'll, down. I'll leave him my leader to last. I'll tell you who he is, but I... Um, I mean, for Stevie G, I think he would inspire our, our team to come back from their, their deficit. Nice. Okay. So my last one then, um, he's got allegiance to teams that neither of you two like so i apologize for this but i saw him more as the um the, the gordon pib character so when he gets angry he gets angry roy Keane. i don't mind that oh, he, he was a failure at celtic so oh uh, yeah but i'm uh, my united player again but i uh, listen <laughs> oh, that, ex forest there you go he was a failure at celtic though i came up with all this all the hype and he failed, so that was good. All right, so I think no bad. My last um, pick, the leader, the captain, the captain, Barry Ferguson. Barry Ferguson played uh, Barry well. Ferguson's in there, man. I'm, he's, if, I'm, if we're down and that team top needs, he's going to be pulling folk out. He's going to be grabbing by the neck and get them sorted. So Barry Ferguson for me. It, um, didn't, work at the, it didn't work at the Masters on Saturday. That was a... Uh, well, I didn't watch the Masters. <laughs> I, was I, didn't watch it. It. I was buzzing for it. As well. <laughs> right, my last player, I wanted somebody who could come out with a wee bit of the spectacular, unexpected shot. So I went for the first all time top goal scorer, Giroud. Yeah. Right. I thought he'd pull out some kind of scorpion dodgeball effort. Something flashy. Aye. So, didn't you say you're going for a manager as well? Oh, yeah. Do you want my manager? Yeah, I've come up with one as well, so... It, it could only be Mr. Theodore Ted Lasso. Ooh. He, would, he would get this bunch of misfits moving. See, I'm going to change my mind now on who I go for. I was going to go Neil Warnock because, you know, get proper stuck into him but being as you said lasso i'm gonna go roy kent nice someone who's probably just as equally sweary as <laughs> neil warnock james hasn't watched ted lasso yet so this uh, is just... yeah i've not seen ted lasso so you've lost me but i've got a manager oh although i think i found my person i can do a ted lasso reviewer aye okay, no. he's gone again am i back yeah back yeah. Paul's got a lot of it. Paul's got a lot of editing to do then. He's going to be cursing. Me. <laughs> my, my manager then just got just thought about it. Gattuso. We know Gattuso. There you go, man. He would last like one round, then he gets sacked. <laughs> ah, he's in that case though. He will... or, or suspended. So. so what what we're gonna do is I'd love to hear from the people listening to and watching this podcast. Who's winning that ultimate dodgeball game? Is it James's team, my team, or Mark's squad? That's my, my team all day long. Sorry, guys, but um, <laughs> look yeah, so you, <laughs> yeah, you're talking a good game, but no, I, I think my lads have got it. Oh, well, we'll soon we'll soon find out. <laughs> but, but before my feed cuts out, I say we get into the the dodgeball reviews. <laughs> So, James, what's your kind of history with this film? Like, when did you first watch it? What are your kind of memories of it? I seen it uh, when it came out. I was at my it was first year university at the time. Um, back then, it came out. I don't remember seeing it in the pictures. It must have been a DVD, because I don't remember going to see the pictures. Um, and I loved it. It was, like, laugh out loud, funny, close to the bone stuff. And for me, I don't, I was 18, so I don't really remember, you know, that type of humour. 
been so prevalent. Do you know what I mean? Like American Pie and things like that was a bit before. But this is different. Do you know what I mean? This is totally different, and uh, it was amazing. Just so funny. Um, there's so many lines in the film that I still quote to this day um, with my pals and my brother or whatever. Do you know what I mean? And it's just, it's just so funny, man. Um, what were you calling? When did you first see it? Um, well, I've got it on DVD, so I've obviously had it for quite a while. I- I'm actually trying to think. Really, nowadays you watch most things on streaming services, or you see the trailer. Like, see back then, like. It was mostly just like your pal had seen it and they recommended it to you, and then you went down to Blockbusters and bought it, bought it on like video or DVD. Um, so yeah, I don't, really, I didn't really. This was the first time I've watched it in a long, long time. It's not one that, although now that I've rewatched it, I probably would watch it more now. Um, but it's not one of my favorites from that era, but. Like Paul is one of Paul's favorite comedy films, and I've got another pal that loves it as well. Don't get me wrong, I did really enjoy it. It's just not one that I always kind of came back to. Yeah, I, I saw this. It was after it had come out of the cinema. Um, someone I used to work with, you know, our people, they know a guy who gets films, shall we say. Um, he'd obtained it like that, said, Yeah, you know, watch this. Not that I condone piracy at all, obviously. Um, but he said, you know, give it us back once you've watched it. And I think I must have had hold of it for about two years um, and watched it constantly. It was one of those I found it was um, what was sort of classed as a, a daft funny, you know, like in the sort of realms of Anchorman and that sort of thing. It's not trying to be too clever. It's just the jokes are there. And yeah, whether you get away with some of them nowadays is, is questionable. <laughs> There's a few that definitely wouldn't be allowed nowadays. Yeah. No, no, yeah. Because um, I think mine came out at the same time, well, roughly the same time, didn't it? But, um, and I thought, I don't know what, but this is much better than Anchor Man, 100%. Just the, the jokes are so much, I think they're so much more fluent, you know. I'm not saying Anchor Man's a bad film, I love Anchor Man, but I just think Dodgeball just beats it. Um, but aye. that sounds like a podcast in itself. Aye. Dodge, dodgeball like, versus Anchorman. You could do a live pod. Yeah, I'd, I'd, probably, I'd probably agree with James purely because I saw Dodgeball first. Boo. Boo. <laughs> right, we're getting to the the main review then. So, yeah, we just kind of keep it quite general. Things we like, things we didn't like, and then just kind of riff off that until we run out of things to say. Fair enough. Could be here for a long time then. Right. Yeah, so I've got a few things noted down, but I might be able to cut a few of them out. Oh, well, I've got nothing written down, so I was focused on the intro and the dodgeball, uh, football, dodgeball football team. Yeah, so I've got written down. I've seen this film so many times, though, I don't have to go and watch it again, you know what I mean? So I just know the film. Um, but I, I, read, I did a bit of trivia on things as well, but so the, the film, was only, the budget was only 20 odd million. And it raked in like 180 um, million. Check, so. check you having the stats all ready to go. <laughs> I did a wee bit of um, my trial <laughs> on, so I did before that. <laughs> um, that, and also I read that Ben Stiller didn't take that much money from it as well. I think he was like, you got a million pound for the whole thing. He produced that and he got a million pound for it. Um, and it was, wasn't actually going to be made quite a few of the the companies kiboshed it and didn't want to make it um so eventually it picked up and thankfully it did because it's you know just a good film um what is your favorite parts of the film colin then what would you say is your favorite parts of the film favorite parts Um, or quotes I like the one I did in the intro. I was actually gutting myself at the shareholder cup holder one. I thought that was brilliant. <laughs> right. okay. yeah, and as a and as a business teacher, I liked the bit when uh, White didn't realize that people could buy shares in his company, and then the female lead, who's Ben Stiller's real life wife, I'm right in saying. Yep, Kristen Taylor. Yeah, 
think it's she's fine. like she's explaining the fact that because they're publicly traded that they can buy control. So I quite like to be I can class this as a business movie now and not show this in class because it's highly inappropriate. But <laughs> uh, <laughs> so yeah, I like I like I like any just because it's my job. I love seeing like we kind of business aspects to it, the whole aspect to like the takeover and uh, as well. So I thought that was quite interesting. No, definitely. Um, I don't know if I think of that. Actually, you could you could show that part of it, maybe. I don't know. And quickly, hit, quickly hit pause. <laughs> <laughs> Probably one of the cleanest parts of the film, isn't it? <laughs> I really liked. I was saying to Mar, I really liked Michelle. Just just his name particularly, but I just thought any scene he was in was hilarious. Oh. I- Definitely. Um the one where he's he's when White Goodman's at the her, her house and he's got his shiny shoes on and then he, he gets a knock back, clicks fingers and he's a uh, shells in a wee wee motorbike wee home. <laughs> <laughs> That's just so funny. A big a big, big massive guy in a wee in a wee bike. Hey. Um, you know what I mean? But he's got loads of just funny moments, Michelle, isn't he? Um that's good. That that whole scene, like how inappropriate he was, it's just mental that that is like that was a real. Were they married at the time? Were they together at the time? I think they had were, were, yeah. Baby as well, the baby at the time as well. When I found uh, them. That that oh, makes geez. it even. Had it. That makes it even funnier. I think that they're actually a real life couple when you watch those scenes. Uh, she's in quite a lot of films. She's in uh, Zoolander, I think, as well. When we still are. Right. Yeah. Okay. A few. What about um, you, Mark? What are your some of your highlights? Uh, uh, the one that sticks with me mostly, and this is probably one of the more random ones. You know, when he's coming down the stairs and he's got the dictionary, and uh, he says, "I'm oh, breaking a mental sweat," and then you know, he's on about dating, and then she throws up in her mouth. And he's on about <laughs> oh, in some cultures they only eat vomit. I read about it in a book. <laughs> that I don't know why that particular bit. <laughs> there's, but there's there's a few. Um, what I did notice is there's a couple of times where they do like a bit of a, a pause when they're sort of going through like listing stuff where he goes like, oh, I'm white, W-H-I-T, E, and she also almost has to give him like a, a nudge to spell his own name properly. Um, but then when I think they're watching the dodgeball video with young patches and he's going through the five Ds, they do the first four and then he's like, there's that little bit of a pause. <laughs> Then dodge again. <laughs> uh, I, I was going to try and come up with something like that. So seismic cinema. So there's a speak. Then I've run out of ideas. So yeah. that was that was an idea for the intro. I like to see the bit where you spoke about being. You no, know, he's coming down with the book, the dictionary. Um, the whole scene's good as well because you get the him grabbing the bull by the horns. Yeah. Uh, in, the, in, the, in the picture, and he goes, "It's a metaphor." And he goes, but it really but that happens. Happens. <laughs> 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 That was good. Um, but one of my favorite characters, I just want to, I don't know if Colin, you're going to come up with this, who your favorite character was in the in the actual thing, but I might be giving my game away here a little bit. But Pepper, the the co commentator in the, the Dodgeball tournament, Jason Bateman, yes, he his quotes are phenomenal, unbelievable. Um, I, I forgot. I forgot that quote came from this film because there's a YouTuber I listen to called Sean Chandler. Is a movie podcast does really well, uh, and he put he puts that bit about that's a bold strategy. Let's hope it pays <laughs> off for. Him. That's in that that's like interjected into so many videos I've watched, but I totally forgot it came from Dodgeball. Aye, he's wearing a blindfold, Cotton. He won't be able to see very well. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll laugh at that bit because I've always, um, my sort of football history involved blind football as well. So when yeah, he's got that, I'm just like, yeah, I know people who actually have to go through that <laughs> in in a sporting context. But uh, yeah, there's a couple of things I picked up on, um, and I'm not I'm not trying to pick the film apart by any stretch, but I suppose as part of review, that's what you do, pick, isn't it? Pick it. Um, when they they're in the, the the qualifying match in that sort of like, sort of town hall sort of thing and they're talking about playing Boy Scouts and it's the girls that come out and Steve the Porrot goes 
bollocks. <laughs> For an American film, I always see that as a bit of more of a, a British expletive. You know, wouldn't it, you know, you don't expect Americans to use the word pub, do you? It just doesn't sound right. And when he said that, I was like, that just sounds more suited to it. If there was an English or, I would say, British version of it, more suited to that. And in that bit as well, you know, when they're celebrating the win after they've got the the, the grammar jamboree as well, don't forget that. Um, the song, as they celebrate, it's a stereophonic song. I'll pick that up. I don't know what that was. What song was that again? Uh, it's Help Me, She's Out of Her Mind. It's the opening track to, I think it's their fourth album. Um, you got to go there to come back. You said you think you knew the answer to that. <laughs> <laughs> So, they did that. They did that a couple of times. The whole fake out because they think you said they're playing the Boy Scouts, and then it's the. I also love how they bet them on like a pure technicality as well. Yeah, <laughs> damn you, Bernice. <laughs> but the the biggest fake out was the bit of the car wash when there's like this shot of like the girl cleaning the car, and it just cuts to them just standing in their underwear. <laughs> yeah. You got that weird yeah. guy asking. Um... Justin to just keep cleaning his wheels like that. That's <laughs> creepy. Get in there nice and deep like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just no need. Uh, oh man. I did I did I did just sit there for the whole hour and a half just smiling though. Like it was that kind of film that just will feel good. Oh, definitely. So it's not trying to be anything it's not is it's not like I say it's not trying to be too clever or you know too many plot twists it's just this is going to be funny here you go wait wait's obviously hilarious but he's also like one of the most like ridiculous movie characters of all time surely like just he's just so out, out there and just inappropriate and ridiculous yeah but he's I got good think... hair what's that so it's all in the hair, isn't it? Was it paper says feathered and lethal or something uh, like that? Feather and lethal, that's right, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I think yeah. um, this is Ben Stiller's best part. Like I don't don't see a lot of Ben Stiller films, Zoolander and all that, and even more serious ones. But this is by far his best acting role, just because it's just so you know hilarious and so outrageous. Um, you know, it's just for, but a wee guy and just to be acting like that, do you know what I mean? So I, I think it's Mike Goodwin is a, a class character. Would you not say Zoolander's maybe his best known role because the whole Blue Steel? I don't know so much, man. I, know, I mean, I love Zoolander. Don't get me wrong. And just, I don't. I, don't I, would, I would disagree with that. I think Dodgeball is probably more now saying that though. A lot. I mean. Dodgeball's down in Disney, and um, a lot of the stuff's been cut out. And yeah. other, other, they've changed parts yet, so I don't know. I why. watched. I watched the DVD, like you said. Ah, I should because. Um, what was cut few, out? There's a few edits. Um, Is it just inappropriate jokes? <laughs> well, I but no because it, some of the stuff they cut out is like. Disney, there's a lot, put it this way, there's a, lot, there's a lot worse stuff in the film they didn't cut out. So let's the first bit that I remember because I, I looked up as well. So you know the bit where he goes, Justin's at the cheerleader competition. Oh, Christ, yeah. <laughs> and he goes, it's like, yeah, so he's got, he's got to do the whole thing. It's like Martha Johnstone, <laughs> and he's got to lift it up. Yeah, it's, it's fair to say she's a little bit bigger so, than him, isn't she? <laughs> So a I, part there. At the, the bits that were cut from Disney, um, I think I picked up on a, a few of the others. Um, I'll, I'll try and keep them as appropriate as possible. Aye. Um, there's a bit where Patches comes into the gym where they're training and he paraphrases a line from, was, the, was it Platoon? I love this one of Napalm in the morning. Um, he says that, but he uses um, a different <laughs> word as well. <laughs> Uh, rhymes, with, rhymes with chief. Yeah, rhymes with chief. There we go. That, that's that. Um, and then there's a bit where he says, "You're about as much use as a." And then in the Disney one, it says poopy flavored lollipop. Aye, aye. As I was to male appendage. There you go. Well done. You could you could get a job here, Mark. That was very well done. 
Yeah, there's um, I, I've got a couple of things as well. Sorry if I'm sort of going into this. Too. On, uh, on, man. I think I should be for about the foreshadowing thing. Um, you got at the start where Peter sees the advert for Globo Gym and he goes, Oh, spare me. Which White says that at the end when you see the advert for uh, the new average Joe's. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's the reference to buried treasure at the start when Steve comes and accosts Peter in the gym about it and the payment and that. Obviously, the winnings come in a treasure chest at the end, don't they? Yeah. But spoiler alert for anyone here. <laughs> <laughs> um, they play milkshake when they're doing the car wash scene. It's a lot of obviously the post credit bit where Whitey Goodman starts singing that. Um, I've got any other. Oh, they've got a couple of others. Yeah, sorry. Uh, the bit where he goes to uh, Catherine about not being a boss, but then at the end, Peter becomes his boss because he's bought Globo Gym. Uh, what else have I got? There's only a couple of others. Uh, Gordon mentions the sudden death elimination, doesn't he? He mentions that uh, continuation rule 113A or something like that. And then they end up going to that particular rule um, right at the end of the last match. Oh, aye, that's right. When he's, um, aye, with his, his, his footsteps out the, up over the line, is it? That, yeah, that yeah, because the yeah, because Peter gets eliminated by getting hit, doesn't he? And then White's over the line, and then you have got the ref there with his whistle, flapping his arms about. That's a warning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, but you're saying that as well. I don't know if you know. Is this a um, couple of bits in the actual play? Peter's front foot comes out of the triangle. That's right. It does. That's that. And then, and there's another bit. And is it the kamikazes? The, the, the Japanese lads with the headbands and the, <laughs> the, the the number four, he does the little flippy throw, and but he gets he gets hit with a ball, but gets eliminated instead of, but I think eliminated by the catch instead. No, yeah, I don't, I don't know about that. Yeah, you've been hanging out. Right. You've been hanging out with Paul too much for that level of <laughs> analysis. But you do realise why um, Peter stepped outside the, the triangle, didn't you? Though it was aim low. If you couldn't, you couldn't see very well. So you, <laughs> yeah. it's inevitable. <laughs> w- was he blindfolded by any chance? Yeah, yeah, I think he was. So, <laughs> so I, I didn't know any of that. Well, some of that stuff anyway. I knew about the some of the some of the stuff that's cut from Disney, but. There's only a couple of that stuff. Um, yeah. I've, I've just found where I've written it down. So number four, Kamikaze, should have been eliminated before being hit. So he's thrown it, it's been caught, and uh, then he gets yeah. it with it. So the poor lad's been taken out twice. <laughs> oh, what, is there any stuff he didn't like, Colin? I had one. I don't know what you guys would think about this. Um, I can't remember the character's name. The one who... Wasn't the smartest. Owen. I can't remember his name. That may have been it. The the tall, skinny one. Aye. Aye. There's a bit where he's just totally oblivious to the fact they had a player that thought he was a pirate. He's just like, nah, I don't don't quite uh, recognize it. I know it's funny, but part of me was like, it's just like too stupid. Like, I don't know. Took me out a wee bit that one. Aye, um, Owen also goes as well. You know, they got caught with fifty thousand dollars. It's like um, <laughs> we can pay him in you no know, Canadian dollars, and it's like nice nah, seventy thousand. So one hundred and twenty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like one hundred twenty thousand dollars. No, that's funny. I just thought his character was just, it was just a wee bit too far. Yeah, he's also the one who screwed up the uniforms as well, isn't he? Got the, uh, the the bondage oh. gear instead of the. That scene was hilarious. Uh, the the exchange the the yeah, the questions back. Yeah. <laughs> what is a are you a Vince Vaughn fan? Uh, I, I don't mind him. To be fair, um, I wouldn't put him in like a lot you of know, favorite actors, but I wouldn't necessarily turn anything off that he's in. Would you put them in your favourite top six actors that would be a dodgeball team? I would say you've got to, haven't you? 
<laughs> winning captain of the Las Vegas International Open. Yeah. You've got no one choice. Of, one of my favourite comedies uh, that he's in is uh, The Internship with Owen Wilson. The, the, Owen Wilson. Is that the Google one? I, I love that film. Um, do you play that in, in class, Colin? I do, actually. It's one of my three business-related DVDs. I've got that. The Social Network, although there's a scene in that I always skip. And I wonder which one that is. The, the Founder. That's oh, the McDonald's one, isn't it? Uh, so I've got them in my classroom, although my new uh, PCs in my classroom don't have a disk drive, so that's, <laughs> so that's a bit, bit rubbish. <laughs> uh, we've got some uh, in other PCs in other places. There's some dummy ones as well, but some do have them. Mm -hmm. Odd, odd set up. Yeah. Anyway, um, I didn't. Yeah. I, feel, I didn't like the. I thought Steve the pirate for me wasn't he that enough. And I get like, I don't know. It'd been better if Owen. He's Owen. There was times he was funny, right? But I think I agree with you. There was times like, oh, well, how did you not notice there's a pirate in your play team? Do you know what I mean? It's, <laughs> I just some of the, some of the stuff I don't think I think he was just there to make up the numbers part of me thinks that and give Steve a wee bit more of a prevalent part. Do you know what I mean? Um, so I'm going to say one of the first dislikes I could think of at a minute is Steve doesn't like, get enough screen time in it. So that's a for me somewhere somewhere Paul's going gar Paul loves Steve the pilot. <laughs> well, he's I, remember, I, mean. I remember I remember we did. Because I'm contractually obliged to make at least one Star Wars reference per podcast. So, Steve the Pirates, played by Alan Tudyk, who voices K2SO in Rogue One. And also the chicken in Moana. Yeah. yeah uh, I've, I've got two young daughters, so I've seen that film. I'm, yeah, pretty, sure, I'm pretty sure when we were doing a, we did a Rogue One review, I'm pretty sure Paul put his screen name as Steve the Pirate. <laughs> Ah, right. That was, that was a deep cut. Just trying yeah. to think what... The four times are... Me? I don't think I've seen that one. You've not seen what? I think I've seen your Rogue One review. I don't want you to go and oh, check that out. But you've seen Rogue One? Aye. By the way, second Star Wars reference. If you're watching Ahsoka, get episode five watched ASAP. It is incredible. I've still seen episode four, man. I've seen any of them yet, so <laughs> you've outdone me there. Anyway, I, I, just, I just hijacked it back to back to dodgeball. Aye. Um, what, what, there's a lot, loads more likes than dislikes, do you know what I mean, man? But it's a classic film. Um, what, is, I mean, what is your favourite, favourite line? There must be like one of the favourite ones. Is there ones you quote every single day? Um, maybe it's not so much to you, Colin, because you don't know if you've um, watched it enough. Yeah, in terms of what I said, the one I really liked was the one about the shareholders and cup holders. That, just, that, tickled, that, that tickled me. Aye. One that I'll probably use more often than not, and it is you couldn't hit water if you fell out of a boat. <laughs> you can hit water if you fell out. I like the yeah. lie up, ladies. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's like she talking to us. <laughs> oh, do you know what? There's a there was one I just remembered I really liked. It was a it's like, are you a is that, are you a, a banker? No, I'm a lawyer. I said, like, oh, what do you specialize in? Like, as he's hitting on her, he's like, oh, yeah, sexual harassment. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's, it's a you know, what sort of law is it? Pretty eyes or somebody calls her. Um, I, thought, I thought that was that was funny. I mean, she's going through his like financial filing system, which is like a yeah. like a, a Monica cupboard. If you get the reference, he said, "I call them keepers." Um, yeah, I thought she was quite good. Um, it was a good wee twist that she became part of the dodgeball team as well. So it was that whole bit where they're like film secretly filming them train. Or not so secret, it's like a cardboard cut out of uh white. Um and she the just like takes the, she just like 
knocks the head off it with the ball. It's like the all turn around and it's like, hello, what's going on here? Uh, it's, it's, it's like a lot of references regarding Kate playing. Yeah. Um, a lot of misconceptions. Aye. <laughs> Just proved, proved, proved half right to the end. It's always proved half right, yes. Did you um, know the... Do you remember what the kind of slogan for this film was? Ah, uh, it was... Um, it's, it's on the cover of the DVD. Ah, it's Grab Life by the Balls, isn't it? Uh, but did you know that I got this from... Because I was listening to What's the Script's review of this. Um, so apparently in America, the slogan was just Grab Life by the Ball. Singular. Oh. <laughs> so that's unfortunate. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't have the same ring to it, does it? No. no. I did laugh when... Um, well, at most of the film, obviously, because it'd be in a comedy. When... You know, when White's kicking off at the referee at the, at the end, it's, it's just like he's channeling his inner McEnroe. All right. I can imagine, you know, him doing that sort of thing on the tennis court and he's just, oh, we're sweating like greased monkeys out here. And it's like, how does a greased monkey actually sweat? I, but yeah, this is why Goodman were on about so anything's possible, I suppose. That's your poppycock. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, should, we should talk about the the team manager a bit more because he was played by was it Hank Azaria in the kind of olden days. Yeah, in the instructional video, he uh, uh, plays young then patches, he, doesn't he? And then he appears just kind of at the normal age. What? How did he first appear? Like what? Where, where did they first meet him? Was it in the pub? It was outside. Well, Dirty old old days, patches. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they just had the encounter with uh, Globo Jim and. Pete's getting in his car, isn't he? Uh, mm. His uh, death scene's fantastic when he just gets crushed by the light. <laughs> I don't uh, think they make a sorry your coach got crushed by two ton of irony Hallmark card. <laughs> <laughs> it's just when they're having like beers afterwards and it, they're just talking about it so casually <laughs> and getting ready to play again. Yeah, then all of a sudden splat. It's like the, uh, that scene for The Wizard of Oz, isn't it, with the house? And you just got his feet sticking out the bottom. I like the whole kind of double cross and that uh, White thought he'd taken over the company, but then he put, he went he took the money and he put a bet on them winning. And that's right. That's the, that's the money he used to, to take over. That was after a discussion with uh, Lance Armstrong as well, wasn't uh, it? Yeah, yeah, because that would have been all that was a lot pre controversy, wasn't it? You know, because at that point everyone thought that he'd. You know, won the Tour de France that many times clean, but you know, we now know otherwise. Uh, There's a well. couple of other cameos in there as well, and there's uh, Chuck Norris and William Shatner. The great uh, William Shatner. So I think it should be contractually obliged for me to reference a, some sort of Star Trek thing as well, Colin. I don't but, think that's. A th- <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't think that's a thing. Seismic Cinema's origins are rooted in Star Wars. The term. <laughs> the true. term. The term seismic comes from the seismic charges of Boba Fett. That's true. Now he's a philosophizer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, William Shatner and Chuck Norris at the end. I it was a, a good wee turn up. Right. Well, have we got any? We start rounding up, or have we get any kind of final thoughts or memories or quotes from the film. <laughs> I've got okay. okay. a few I can take to try and wrap my brains. I just think all oh, your Peppers quotes are, are just like so funny. It was it he says about the when they all came out again in the, the bondage gear. I feel like I'm watching a share video or something, isn't it? <laughs> I feel like I'm watching a share video carton. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he looks uh, he looks so young there, doesn't he? he does. Jason Bateman. Does. Go me yeah. boy. I don't know, I think one of the fu- one of the funniest ones for uh for Pepper Brooks, and it's probably one of the, the more basic ones is go Pepper needs new shorts. That's right. Pepper needs new shorts. Yeah, I can we, say, don't, um, we don't know ask why, but <laughs> that was the, the the bit at the end when he, when he goes to the 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 one in one elimination 
and it's like Cotton starts um, <laughs> and I say in the spiel about he's not he's not seen anything like this since such and such a thing. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was like yeah. great Helsinki in nineteen thirty nine or something like that. Uh, <laughs> it's the kind oh. of film though, like having watched it last night, I kinda want to watch it again quite soon. Do you know what I mean? I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Right. Oh. So, Scores, scores on the doors then. So, Mark, what are you giving us out of ten seismic stars? I'm going to give it a solid eight. There's, there's films that I do prefer to this, but there's a lot that can get behind it in the queue. So, yeah, definitely go for a, an eight. Okay. What about you, Pepper? Um, it's got to be a nine for me, mate. A nine. Um. It just laugh out loud. No inappropriate jokes, but I think they're done in, in the right way. Do you know what I mean? I think it's that humour that where he can get away with now is a different a different question. But I think it was done right then. Do you know what I mean? And so I'm gonna get a nine. I mean, I still laugh at this day. And you say about the laugh. you say about the humour. It's like we're let's like say not near enough twenty years away from it now as we were as that was away from the next one that you're doing in Karate Kid. So it's like how times have shifted with with jokes. And I think you've got to be a bit more, you've got to be more clever with them, haven't you? If you're going to aim them directly at a certain, you know, in a certain direction. Right. Oh, definitely. And I've, obviously we're getting near the end of the podcast, but I feel like there's loads more we could talk about, do you know what I mean? But I know we have to cut it at some point but uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go with a nine for me we've only, we've, we've, you, only, we've only been greenlit for so many hours our studio our studio only lets us record for an hour now that's all right and um, me i'm um, what would i go for i'd probably go same as i'd probably go same as mark i've got an eight an eight yeah, that's ten. Yeah, why well, mm. I'm taking a point off for uh, the daft joke about the pirate. I suppose my I'm taking a point off just because I'm a I'm team anchorman, so just taking a point off for that reason. Although, don't Vince Vaughn and Ben Stiller both cameo they in? They do. Anchorman. They do. That's during the whole uh, big fight scene. Where did, they, where did Where did you get that shirt at the toilet store? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that bit, yeah. Um, I personally prefer Anchorman, but I still really enjoyed this film. It's obviously the purpose of this film isn't to have a real deep story, so it doesn't have that kind of deep, kind of emotive story. But it's funny, action packed, simple, just kind of good popcorn film, isn't it? But I'll give it an eight. I was going to say, do you think there's scope for a sequel? Or, well, two questions is there scope for a sequel? And if there is, do you think they should do it? No, 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 no. Nah, it's left no. alone. You know, it's got to be left no, I, I agree, because I'd, I'd heard something to say that there was going to be one. But I, I read think that it was... as well. It was all about um, Vince Vaughn. Vince Vaughn didn't want to do it, but he had to see the script first or something like that. You know what I mean? I don't know. But... Anchorman 2 is the only thing I need to say here. Don't do it. Yeah, I think there's, there's some films that you can get away with leaving for a long time for sequels, like Top Gun Maverick, as an example. Whereas, I think with the I saw the Dumb and Dumber one that they did after like the, the twenty year gap, and I was like, I didn't enjoy that. No. One success story was I'm a massive fan of American Pie: The Reunion. I thought that was really well done. Bye. So I, think I've, I think I've seen one, two, and the wedding. We, oh, our reunion is brilliant. It's probably my favourite, to be honest. Uh, the wedding's my favourite. Third one. My least favourite, actually. Really? Hmm. I would go four, one, two, You're three. You're joking me. No, it's because Oz wasn't in it. He was, he was a, a, a long character anyway, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we've all done our scores, yeah? Aye. Oh, yeah. James, go you on. were going to give a wee some of the, not tweets, some shout out to some X's. Shout out to my ex. That was a little mix song, but never mind. <laughs> Don't do that again. <laughs> I'll give you some um, some feedback, man. So we put it on Twitter. Um, 
and what's the script podcast said absolutely don't, brilliant. don't read the other one <laughs> no. <laughs> um i won't read the other one sorry guys i know you're listening um <laughs> we've got our reasons for it um absolutely brilliant our, our third episode white goodman is just well um of hilarity um uh, it's the hair cotton feathered and lethal so that's their quote for that one um sp film viewers I don't think it would like it now if I rewatched it, and I know Sophie would absolutely hate to watch it. So that's that's get... his uh, that's his partner that he does the podcast with. Um, I commented saying definitely do it then. <laughs> I, I, I don't know, man. Like I, I, I can understand why people would they like it. I mean, now they haven't seen it before, but because I, I, we watched it when when it was you know back in, when it was out. Um, still holds up. This is uh, no one fifteen all cast. We had an episode this one a few weeks back. Interested to hear that how interested to hear what we are all saying. So check us out then. We are all positive about it. Um, just just screening these just now, Colin. So Tony Gladstone, <laughs> Gladstone, um, Patches was. Wasn't the best coach, but it was the right coach. And the quote that we have, I can't, I can't believe I've missed that. Nobody bleed, nobody makes me bleed my own blood. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, a quality quote. I can't believe I missed that out. So this movie is so quotable. Made today, yes, you can do edgy and risky humour as long as it's done with a purpose. I think every joke fit like it should. Solid flick. I got to agree there. Um, Tabby tap room, tap room, Tabby Gunner loves that movie. We introduced that's, her, that's their that's their son. Yeah, I remember uh, listening to the the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. They were on it. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so Gunner loves the movie. We introduced him when we got caught in the rain while camping. So, yeah. N- named after the actor that played. Um, the character. Ah, yeah, see, I, I remember listening to the podcast and they said that. Uh, Poor delicious seventy. I'm going to miss out. Um, sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, some a couple of uh, gifs in there. I can read them out. Do you mean no, gifs? No, they're called gifs. <laughs> Don't get me started in that. No, but I do it anyway because it's sterile and I like the taste. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but is it necessary? Um, oh, and the uh, Cinematic Connections podcast um, said, Ouch town, population you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, pepper quote there. So there we go, man. So thank you for all those uh, interactions, guys. Um, just keep on doing it. We'll give you a shout out on the, the pods. And all the ones there that were podcasts, which was the majority, make sure you give them a, a like, a follow, and a listen as well. Some good friends of the podcast in there. Definitely. Talking about good friends of the podcast, Mark, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on again. I'm hoping this yeah, won't be our last, really enjoyed it. our last voyage. We've got Ted Lasso to do. And we've got, there was another one. I can't remember what it was now. Uh, I don't know, but I, I, I'm fairly sure we'll cross paths in the near future. <laughs> Sounds good to me. So, and teaching, we're told, told about the what's it? What's the is it the sandwich approach? So you tell them what you're going to tell them. You tell them, and then you tell them what you told them. So, do you know what I'm talking about? It's like a plenary. He needs to he needs to pitch himself again at the end. Ah, uh, so you've got, you've got to recap the, the, in the lesson. Aye. Aye. So, Mark, it'd be good if you, at the end, just give a another wee reminder of where we can find you. Yeah, um, usual podcast platforms, uh, Spotify, Good Pods, um, anywhere that um, Anchor or the old Anchor distributes to. Um, Why did they change the name? Because it's, it's just confusing now. Because you post on Spotify, you can also post your post from Spotify for podcasters. It's just very. Yeah, it's just weird, but everyone's changing the name now. But but thankfully, the podcast isn't. Um, Twitter or X, whatever you want to call it these days, or whatever Elon Musk wants to call it day to day, 
Proj underscore foot, Instagram, Project Football Podcast, and search for Project Football Podcast on Facebook as well. That's pretty much Thank it. I've got it. nothing else to... Thank you very much. Um, it's It was so much easier doing the plugs back when none of the places were changing their names. So I've decided I'm just going traditional. So we've got Seismic Cinema on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Threads, TikTok, and it's also on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Anchor, and also Amazon Music, Audible, etc. So yeah, so that was our review of Dodgeball, part of our sport in September. Next week, we'll get cast and views on to review Karate Kid. And you can also check out our recent review of Space Jam, featuring myself and James, and our recent reviews of Ahsoka, episodes one through to three. So yeah, that's that's us. So thanks again, Mark, for coming on. And everyone it's should been a pleasure. check out his football podcast, particularly the one with Morton and Rangers on it. That was episode 52. There you go. I know that because it was the most recent one. (laughs) 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 Uh, Cheers, Mark. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for coming on. That's been brilliant. Loved it. Cheers. Awesome. All right. Cheers, Mark.